Hi, I'm Three Gnomes, a solo indie game developer currently working on a 3D platformer psychological horror game. In the game you play as a little gingerbread man exploring a hub world house and finding all kinds of little secret magical worlds for you to explore. In my last devlog I made a colorful new level completely from scratch and I also made a new enemy for you to fight, Carter who's a carton of milk who tries to hit you with a straw. I also added a blood effect when you kill an enemy so that it makes a more satisfying feeling of killing something. And now let me show you what I've been working on since. And make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. So I started out by fixing this tube that goes between this transition level and the freezer level. A lot of people said it kind of looked out of place on the plate, and one person in particular in my Discord named Lizzo, or, uh, Lizzo? I'm sorry. Anyways, Lizzo said maybe the ice hole thingy that takes you to the freezer level could be surrounded by popsicles to make it look a little more in place. And I loved that idea. So I added in some ice and some of the popsicle characters from the next level, and then I started putting things inside of the ice cubes, coins, Carter, cookies, a lot of sea things, I guess. Anyways, after that, I put in some nice fog, as if kind of like when you open a freezer and it's, you know, just misting off of it. And I thought all that looked pretty good. So thank you, Lizzo, for your suggestion. Next up, it was time to add a new enemy to the game, Barry. I'd already previously made the model, so I just had to rig him and then animate him. A lot of his animations were pretty similar to Carter, except for his death animation, I wanted to have a separate one that was basically just him being squished. Because Carter is too bulky to be crushed, but a cute little strawberry on legs, if you stomp on his head, should be able to be murdered that way. So now you could squish him. Next up, I threw him in Unity and added the sprites that are going to be his eyes and the greenery leaves. What do, you, what do you call those on top of strawberries? I'm going to call them leaves, the leaves that are on top of his head. And I fiddled around with that for a second, and I decided I didn't really like how his legs turned out, so I had an idea to fix those. I just kind of made a little bit of the grass texture sticking up out of the tin foil that make up his boots, and I thought that looked good. And Barry is one of the characters in the game that's meant to be a mix of realistic textures like the strawberry and the tin foil and 2D cartoony sprites like his eyes and the top of his head. And I pers and I personally and I personally love how this ended up looking, but let me know in the comments what you think about it. What do you think? Smash or pass? So first I started by adding a collider to Barry and then a very, very large collider that goes around him. That's kind of his detection sphere. And that's you so that if you're within that range, he will turn towards you and chase you down to attack you. With that set up, I hopped into the game and... First thing, obviously a couple of these carters are acting pretty weird, um, but I wasn't within the sphere where Barry would notice me yet, so I was going to take care of the carters and then worry about him, and then when I went to go and see if he was working, I realized what the problem is. I hadn't set the detection sphere collider around him to, be, to, to be a trigger only, so essentially <laughs> it was treating that as if there was actually something there for you to hit. Mom. So I just had to click that, and now he was working. At least as far as this, so far. So now he could follow you. I did not still set up the rigid body, so he was kind of flying through the air. Just like Carter last time, he was no longer tethered to the earth of you mortals. So dorky. So I clicked a few more things and set that up. Now he had gravity. I also gave him a health system so that he could deal damage and die. Before I worked anymore on Barry, I wanted to make it so that when you killed something, you understood why you're incentivized to do that. Specifically, you're given coins. So I wanted to give more active feedback to the player that killing an enemy rewards them with coins. So I started by taking the coin sprite and adding that to a particle effect that would play after they collect the coins after killing a character. And then I also added the coin collect sound effect to that. And now, after an enemy took their final breath, you were given three coins. Get that money! And while I'm, uh, talking about coins... I hear you, I hear you, the coins are repetitive. Trust me, I pick them up a hundred times a day. <laughs> I get it. I'd been putting it off because I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to do it, and I knew there were several ways to do this, but I started simple and just tried making the pitch randomized every time you collected a coin. And it felt <laughs> weird. So what I did was make it so that when you collect a coin, the pitch of the coin sound effect would be raised slightly every time. Unless it's been 5 seconds since the last time you collected a coin, and then the combo that you've been building ends, and the pitch resets. This is meant to make it feel more fun to collect coins quickly. And this quickly raising pitch is something that a lot of games do to get you to do this. So I tried it out, and... 
Okay, so I had a global variable set at zero that would raise every time you collected a coin. That's how the pitch was supposed to raise. However, I set the pitch to start at zero instead of one. Uh, and zero is effectively negative one for all intents and purposes. It's really low. And the pitch was also raising too fast, so I had to lower the amount that was raised each time you collected a coin. Now it feels somewhat functional. Next, I made this also apply to when you get the sound effect after you kill an enemy. Just some more subconscious motivation to go on a killing spree whenever you get the opportunity. Anyways, back to Barry. So, one thing that makes Barry different than Carter is that Barry's detection trigger actually moves with him, meaning he can follow you and follow you and follow you no matter how far away you go, versus Carter, who's essentially only guarding a specific area. And if you leave that area, he leaves you alone. Next, I set up Barry's walk animation, and oh my god, it was so cute watching him chase you around. Look at his little feet's just moving. And I also set up his death animation. And that's your warning. Don't get too attached to things in my game. You might end up killing him. Another thing that makes Barry different than Carter is that Barry actually talks to you sometimes. So to show this, I gave them a dialogue box and just set them up as little cockney guards in front of the bridges that lead over to the other side of the healthy kingdom. Hello, you're not supposed to be here. Let's not cross this bridge if you know what's good for you. Also, the little dialogue image that I drew for them is my favorite so far. However, in order to set this up correctly, I had to create a global variable, basically a state, that shows whether or not you are hostile to the characters in the Healthy Kingdom. So essentially, Barry will just talk to you and talk to you and talk to you using the dialog box that I set up until you go over to the other side of the kingdom and enter that trigger space or kill an enemy. And then the game will let the guard berries know that you are now hostile to them and they will start attacking you. So essentially with Carter, you're always going to have beef on site. But with Barry, it's determined by whether or not you have pissed him off yet. You might have also noticed that I added something extra to this scene. I was looking back over at my concept art and realized that in my original ideas, I had so much barbed wire in this area. So I just popped into Krita and made that quick based on the concept sketch and threw it around and made it so that it did damage to you if you collided with it. And now this felt a lot more like a place you go to die. Now that Barry was set up and I'd spent a lot of time on this fridge world area, I wanted to do something that was a little more general. Specifically, from the beginning of this process, I had in my mind an idea for a box that you could break and either get coins or health pickups. This is kind of a staple of the 3D platformer genre. And so I finally decided to put in the time to make that. So, first and foremost, I had to give you a way to break the box. And I really wanted this to be a satisfying thing for you to do. I made an animation that would play after you hit it, and then I sped that up because it was too slow. And then to just kind of cheat for the moment, I hid a health pickup inside the box. No coding, it's just slapped in there. Next, to make it feel more satisfying, I made it so that when you hit it, a particle effect would play. This would also make it feel more like you actually broke something. And that was a good start. I didn't like how this health pickup just kind of lingered in the air after you broke a box. I felt like it should drop to the ground. So in order to do that, I needed to set up a rigid body so that it would have gravity attached to it. I also finally put coating on it so it would actually wait to spawn until you had broken the box. I hopped into the game to try it out and just like everything else, of course, it didn't work right the first time, but at least it was kind of funny looking. You could essentially just roll it around because I, I didn't lock the upwards rotation in place, which is what you should do with things like coins. So you can move them around with the rigid body, but it'll still face the right way and spin the right way. So that was a pretty quick fix. So next, to get a satisfying sound of breaking the box, I went into my kitchen and I grabbed some leftover chips from Chili's and I held my microphone next to one as I crushed it into a trash can and I threw that sound effect into the game. And while I loved it, I thought I should try reducing the pitch a little bit to make it a more boxy sound. And that wasn't the best call. <laughs> <laughs> but I put it back to normal, and now you had a satisfying sound for when he broke the boxes. It really felt good. Next, I wanted to make it so that if the box was in the air, you could jump from underneath and hit it, and it'll pop and explode, kind of like the Mario blocks. So I set that up, and that worked pretty well, except it's pretty hard to gauge whether or not you're under it in the right space, but, I mean, even Super Mario 64 struggled with that, so good enough. Next, I remade the box, and instead of the health pickup, I put a coin in there that would pop out when you hit it. And that was fine, but I thought it'd be more fun to have three coins pop out instead. And I thought that felt and looked a lot cooler. 
and now I had boxes set up. I could sprinkle them around, put them around the world. I just had another thing for you to interact with. And that was fun. And it was satisfying. So I was happy. Let I me mean, know what you think about the boxes. And chilies. I, I went to chilies for the first time and it was really good. So I'm glad I got to use the chips in the game, I guess. I'm not sponsored by chili, obviously, but uh, now I'm hungry. What am I doing? I'm making a devlog. Anyways, so next I... Um, I slapped a few of these boxes in the transition level, and I loved how that ended up looking. So, now I didn't have any more excuses to prevent me from starting the freezer level. And I always avoid starting new levels because it's so much stress hopping into something completely bare bones and trying to make it into a full world for you to explore. Like, where do you even start with that? Well, for this one, I decided to start by reformatting an old enemy. So I took Carter and I added a icy freezer burn material to him. And I also slowed down his movement quite a bit. Next, I put smaller ones around the world, but I mainly focused on making the one in the middle here larger. And even though he was bigger, he was more brittle, so he was still killed with one hit. So not quite a mini boss, but still a little more intimidating than your average enemy. One thing I definitely needed to change though was that Carter is made of like ice and crystal. So when you hit him, blood shouldn't probably come out. I wanted it to feel like you were breaking ice. So I made a particle effect that felt a little more natural to that, and I would have to come back to the sound at a later point. I didn't mess with that over the course of this devlog. I guess I gotta go back to Chili's and get some <laughs> ice or something. <laughs> also, I know there's some lag in these video clips. I didn't set up occlusion culling right away to make the game run smoother, and also just the process of recording and high quality also slows down things, so the actual game when you're playing it runs smoothly, and I'm sorry it doesn't always look like that here. Um, I know that's kind of hard to watch, but I try to limit that as much as possible. In this level, you'll encounter a roadblock to stop you from moving forward, and that's that there is a lever that needs to be activated to raise a bridge. However, in order to do that, you have to find the handle for the lever. So you've got the base of the lever here that you've seen before, and you have to explore and go to the other side of the level to find the lever itself. And then you go back and you can put it in place and activate it. So I set up this basic lock and key system and then I had to actually make it functional. So I made it so that you could collect the handle out of the ground and it would play the ice particle effect when you did that. Like you're just jerking it up out of the ice. And then I also added a particle effect for when the bridge pops into existence to give it the effect that it's been raised out of the ice and snow below it. And that definitely felt and looked a lot better, but it was missing a couple things. First of all, I needed to make the camera shake when this happened. And I had never really messed with the camera shake effect at all. So I just started fiddling around with that and then set up a special camera effect for when this happens. And I thought that added a lot. Next up, to really bring it home, I needed a deep, rattling earth shake effect, as if it's just being really ripped up out of the earth below it when you pull the switch. And with all these pieces together, it felt so good and so almost polished to activate this switch and see this bridge raised. My girlfriend said it kind of reminded her of in Breath of the Wild when you raise the shrines up, and I think that's a pretty flattering comparison. Let me know what you think. So now, it was time to talk about him. This was the only popsicle creature in this world, and I'm calling them poppers, that will interact with you. So I slapped a basic template on him for his dialogue box, and it was clear I was going to have a lot of work to do, so I zoomed the camera out and gave him a dialogue image and gave you a choice about what you do in this situation. So you can either drop a coin or you can dishonor him. And what does that mean? Well, I wanted to institute a curse that he puts on you if you dishonor him. So in order to set that up, I made it so that when you are cursed and that effect is taking place, your coins will slowly start reducing every three seconds. And then to really make sure you felt like you were cursed, I also added a sound effect, which was a reversed version of the coin pickup sound effect and then made some custom UI to slap on the screen, kind of to obscure your vision and make you immediately understand that something is very, very wrong. So next I made it so that if you talk to him and give him a coin, or even if you're out of coins, if you try to give him a coin, the curse will be lifted. And finally, I just had to make it so that if you give him a coin and you honor him, he'll flip the second switch for you and raise the second bridge. And you would finally have access to the Oh, wouldn't you like to know? You'll have to find out in the next devlog, because that's as far as I went. 
I will tell you there'll be a lot more NPCs over there and a lot more to interact with, but that's as much as I did for the freezer level in this devlog. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss what comes next. Hit the little bell if you want to know right away, and I am so close to 500 subscribers right now as I'm recording this video, so it would mean so much to me if I could hit 500. Thank you so much for everyone that watches my videos and likes and comments. I have a Discord, as I mentioned before, with a great community that I'll link in the comments below and in the description for this video. Make sure you check that out. I'm Three Gnomes, and oh, I have nothing for this sign off. Um, tune in next time to see what I got cooking, because it's because the game's about a gingerbread man. That's I've I've had worse sign offs. <laughs> Anyways, uh, peace, y'all.